in order to understand the how and why for single sideband voice transmission, we must first have an idea of the operation of amplitude modulated radio, or AM. After the invention of the telephone, the idea arose of being able to transmit the human voice without using any cables, but using radio waves, also called Hertzian waves. It was discovered that a high frequency alternating current, say 1000 kilohertz, kilocycles per second, called a carrier, could be fed to a short piece of metal wire called an antenna, producing long-range radiation without having to use long transmission lines. Then they came out with the idea of modulating the carrier so that the electrical signal produced by the human voice, called audio, of a much lower frequency of the order of 16 to 6,000 cycles per second could ride the piggyback on the carrier. The most popular technique for doing this was by amplitude modulating the carrier. In order to do this, a process called heterodyning is used, which we will illustrate now using this example. Please listen to a 1000 cycles per second tone, 1000 hertz. And we are going to assume that such tone is our carrier. The waveform as seen on an oscilloscope would look like this. Now let's listen to a 100 cycles per second tone, 100 hertz. This will represent the voice you want to broadcast. An oscilloscope would display something like this. So far, we have a 1000 cycles per second tone and a 100 cycles per second tone separately. If we now mix both tones, the result will be similar to this. If we look at the waveform produced by the mixture, the image we will see would be something like this. Although not easily perceptible, the mix of 100 cycle and 1000 cycle tones actually produces a rather complex tone containing four different frequencies. Two of them are the original notes, and in addition to them, two other notes are produced, the sum and the difference of the original tones. So now we have the mix of 100 Hz, 1000 Hz, 900 Hz, and 1100 Hz. Hertz is a shorthand for cycles per second. The frequencies of the sum and difference are called sidebands. Due to the addition and subtraction of the various alternation of the tones, the mixing of those four frequencies produces the complex waveform. Heterodination is precisely the key to amplitude modulation. Now imagine that in a radio transmitter we are amplitude modulating a 1 million hertz carrier, that is 1000 kilohertz, with a 1000 hertz, 1 kilohertz audio frequency. Therefore, a lower sideband of 999 kHz is produced, as well as an upper sideband of 1001 kHz. When the carrier and the two sidebands are broadcast and reach the receiver, they are amplified to go through a simple circuit called a detector, where both sidebands heterodyne with the carrier and deliver the audio frequency alone. The amplitude modulated transmitter and receiver system just described has some advantages. Both the receiver and the transmitter are very simple. The frequency response to music is reasonably good, and so is the fidelity. The downside is the waste of energy involved in transmitting three signals to convey a single audio channel. In portable units, this means shorter battery life and shorter signal range. This is especially important in military applications. In the amplitude modulated system, just described, the 1000 kHz frequency is the carrier, the 999 kHz and the 1001 kHz frequencies are the sidebands. 
They are actually the only tones containing the modulation. Most of the energy used goes to generate the carrier, which is just a fixed frequency and does not contain any information, so that we can go ahead and suppress the carrier completely and we will continue to transmit the information through the sidebands. But although they contain voice information, they both contain identical data, so you can as well suppress one of the sidebands, either the lower sideband band 999 kilohertz or the upper sideband 1001 kilohertz and still be conveying the voice information the necessary components for suppressing the carrier in one sideband add some complexity to the transmitter but the advantage is great savings as to energy since both the carrier and one of the sidebands have been suppressed, only the remaining sidebands reaches the receiver. The carrier is not present to beat against the sideband and render the audio, so an artificial carrier has to be generated locally at the receiver by means of an oscillator. Such oscillator generally does not match the original carrier frequency and phase, thus causing some distortion in the audio signal recovered. The quality of the sound is quite bad, limiting its application exclusively to voice communications without the possibility of broadcasting music and songs. The single sideband system is used mainly in amateur radio transmissions and other services that do not require high quality sound. The biggest advantage is the energy savings and the long range of these systems. I hope this video has been of interest to you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Ciao a tarim.